Hi, <laughs> um, I watched Camille Rose Vogue series, or I think they've put it out as a series and a long one hour documentary on wellness and what is wellness. I'm so well. This is like straight up my alley. I took notes and we're gonna share it. So I watched this whole one hour documentary and we're gonna condense it down into like 15, 20 minute video, hopefully. I'm gonna try and be succinct. I've written it out in my good vibes journal and it's gonna, it's gonna work out. I'm extra overly dressed for this video and like a little bit, I was, I was laying in my bed and I was feeling sorry for myself and I was like, Jasmine, I need to film, I need to film, I need to film. Um, so I just got up, put some makeup on and put on an outfit that made me feel like sexy as fuck. Um, so like I am overdressed for this video, but like, that's fine. We can be overdressed, normalize that. So she started off by talking about what is wellness and she basically in the whole documentary, she spoke to lots of different people and different um, doctors, different specialty, specialists, Specialists, special specialists. Okay, I will start off by saying it was very white. This documentary was very white. Um, I know that wellness is not it's not a new idea, especially like in this community. A lot of the time, we look over to Asia because of the wellness kind of community in Asia is like it's built up and it's good, you know. And this kind of documentary focused a lot on America and white Americans specifically and how they found out about wellness in the 70s and the hippies and stuff like that. I'm not knocking anyone, I'm just saying I don't personally think wellness was started in 1961 by a white guy's book. I don't really have a clear idea of what wellness is all about. A lot of ideas around the fact that wellness is about more than just not being ill. It's about more than the lack of disease. Um, and that's kind of where the kind of, within the hippie movement, the wellness idea came from in the Western world, specifically America. She interviewed her mum, which I thought was really cool. Her mum was like her biggest inspiration of like wellness and how she came about it. Complete opposite of me, I was definitely the anomaly in the family in terms of like holistic wellness and things like that. I am kind of, I mean like even saying this, like her mum said that she started off her wellness journey by being vegetarian. I'm the only vegetarian in my family and I think in my friend group. I say friend group as so though I have a friend group. In my like three friends, I'm the only vegetarian. <laughs> And her mum defines wellness as loving yourself and forgiving yourself and just accepting yourself for everything that's happened to you so far and everything you've done so far and just taking responsibility for that but also just not hanging on to it and just being like, okay, but like now, like right now, me right now, like my room looks so cute, my little beautiful bag, I love her. Like it's, it's all good right now, it's all good right now. You wouldn't know I was crying about 20 minutes ago, it's all good. And it doesn't matter that I was crying 20 minutes ago because it's all good now, okay. Oh my gosh, should I do transitions with the wand? I could really do transitions with the wand. Okay, so that rounds up the what is wellness introduction. So I'm in the bathroom for this section because this section is supplements and all my supplements are in here. Some turmeric, some biotin, some zinc. I have some vitamin D, hemp oil, B vitamins. I have some probiotics and I have some aloe vera. Most of these, like these two I take just to grow my hair longer and quicker. These I take to like, when I've eaten stuff I shouldn't eat. Same with the probiotics. Um, this, I just, I thought it was sort of doing, it was gonna help me be less anxious, but it wasn't. It was just hemp and it was just omega. So whatever, I've got it, so I'm gonna use it. And same with this, this helps my tummy. So really the only thing, so like once my hair grows and if I eat things that like I'm not allergic to, the only supplement I need is vitamin D. And that's because I did a hair test that said I'm like built up to be deficient in vitamin D. So really like it ain't all that bad. Camille sat down with a holistic wellness scientist and she also does like tailor planned kind of wellness, healthy advice for you or something. So Camille had like a whole rundown questionnaire with this lady and she went through all of her supplements. So basically she said vitamins like, she literally named these ones. So she said turmeric, um, vitamin B, and she said like green tea as well. Those are very common ones that people always use, but there's so many others. She said that most, supp like, most supplements you get are found in food. She said, as long as you eat 
lots and lots of green foods and i was really shocked that she didn't say meats here i'm not knocking the meat eaters i'm not i'm not i'm not but like she didn't mention that you need to eat meat and she basically just said, get as much green as you can. I mean, to be fair, most people probably already do that. I was just like a supplement junkie. Also, I really would recommend getting your hair tested. I got mine done for about 70 pounds, which I don't know is like if it's too much or if it's whatever, but I personally really liked that and it kind of um, tested all my intolerances. So I have IBS and I think most of the nation does, most of the world does nowadays because just food is all fucked up. But um yeah, and it really helped me, so this is why I take vitamin D, because I'm naturally low in vitamin D. I mean, if you know another way for me to, to get that, then let me know. <laughs> Moving on. So Camille sat down with a psychologist, and this psychologist specialised in eating disorders and things like that. So she basically talked Camille through the whole kind of wellness Thing nowadays with the obsession of the quality of food and it's a big misconception and misinformation within the wellness community that you need to constantly eat clean food and there is such a thing as clean food and dirty food which there actually isn't that actually even such things as refined sugar and I'm definitely a culprit of saying refined sugar is bad and I mean I might have it like every single day but like even that she was saying like yeah it's not good to have loads of but nothing's good to have loads of um so it was quite cool to get that insight and actually that confirmation that even things like refined sugar which is considered the worst of the worst in the wellness community is actually fine okay here i am in the living room and i thought this was the perfect place to talk about community because this is where we kind of all you know congregate together i never kind of thought of wellness like, inc like incorporating the idea of community before like i didn't think that they were anything related or like went together whatsoever but this was like a common theme throughout the documentary is that wellness for you is being like responsible for the community so when she was at the headspace hq she was talking to the guy there and he was saying about like meditation and like the selfishness of wellness and like your mind is actually being responsible for the community because it creates a ripple effect and he gave the example of if he didn't meditate that day or he was feeling extra grouchy then he might not open the door for someone and that might slam in front of that person's face and she will then carry that with her for the rest of the day. So the guy from Headspace um, also was saying about the, how they're creating like a meditation guide for kids and they've trialed it in a couple of schools and like, had positive feedback and stuff and Camille was kind of asking him, was like, oh, that's really cool. Like, what, like, what, what kind of, why did you want to do that? And he was saying that like the mental illness like industry or thing is costing healthcare services so much more money and like it's the trajectory of how much money it's going to cost is going to like outdo cancer, it's going to outdo everything because it's something that literally affects everyone and it obviously can be very serious and it can be like mild and there's kind of different ways of treating literally every different person for like the different causes and like the different levels and like the different stages of the life they're in. Um, it's just saying it's just so important to like teach kids how to just like be kind to themselves and be kind to others and how to really ground themselves and control their emotions and understand their emotions and have like tools and coping mechanisms for that. Camille also went on to this like dance thing which is really really cool but i don't really think i've got time to talk about it in this video um but i would definitely if you want to watch the documentary that that's like a really cool thing so if you're if it's not like your baby or your lover or you're like your parent then you don't tend to look people in the eyes and that can be quite like an intimate thing between human to human which is also quite a scary thing and i mean i know like, if people look me in the eyes and like they're talking to me i'm like ah, don't do that as humans we are like we rely on each other but not like a kind of like a lion that can survive on its own, or like a wolf that can survive on its own. Like humans rely on each other. That's why we have such a thing as society and all these different jobs and things like that because we can't do things completely by ourselves. So like we rely on other humans. So like we need to kind of encourage that connection between other humans. And she was saying that like just making eye contact with someone was so like different and courageous, but like it's so good for our own wellness and for the whole community's wellness because we need that and we rely on that. So Camille Rowe has done something else that we envy and she has been to the Headspace headquarters. If you don't know what Headspace is, it is a guided meditation app and I think it's the best one out there by far. It's the one that completely taught me actually what meditation is, how to meditate um, and was a really good 
it's just it's just it's amazing app if you haven't heard of it definitely check it out if you have heard of it we are again jealous of camille Rowe. she sat down with a co-creator of that i did not know that he used to be a monk and he came kind of came up that lifestyle to create headspace for all of us i think it's been used by seven million people in the world so like he has definitely done a great thing um but he said to camille that about 50 percent of our life we are distracted and we are not present i would probably say it's more than that personally so mindfulness is kind of the state of wanting to be present and meditation is the tool that we use to be present um but what happens when i have a day off and i forget to do it and then from then on i don't do it and he was like this is so common and i'm like yes hello common yes please um i needed advice for that because i haven't meditated properly in like regularly in like since i was a teenager so basically what his advice was to be clear about why you want to meditate he said that just wanting to feel better is not enough like it doesn't give you enough like munition in your body to like continue it through but he suggested something really cool which i've never heard of before called coupling um camille was like nodding when he said that so maybe like it's more common than i think and because obviously she seemed to know what it was but basically coupling is the idea that like so say like we have a shower every day or we have a cup of tea every day because i don't shower every day but i do have tea every day um but yeah i won't have tea at the exact same time every day but i no, I will definitely have at least one cup of tea a day. And he suggested coupling, so like every time I have a cup of tea, I meditate, or I meditate before every cup of tea, or I meditate as I'm making a cup of tea, or like as I've just made it and it's cooling down. Like you like couple it with something that you do every day or regularly, um, without kind of making a designated time in your day to do it. You get me? You get me? Then went on to say about the studies that have been done on meditation and now it is quite a like thoroughly researched topic so scientists um went to tibet and they did studies around monks in tibet and they obviously they did like mris and like different brain scans to like track things um and what they found was that if you meditate it actually changes your brain and you can see the different like pathways moving and changing and I think when Camille sat down with the neuroscientist he was saying something similar that when you meditate you can literally see neurons changing size changing shape and you create different pathways within your brain like you literally change the makeup of it um which is so sick there was this theory that you as a human you grow old and your brain is functioning it's great and you reach a certain age and then it just degenerates from there um but what actually they found with the monks is that your brain doesn't degenerate and it doesn't have to it can go up it can like it's kind of like a muscle like as you get older if you're not using it then it's gonna like fade away so like with meditation you can it, your brain doesn't degenerate um and that was to me, that was like a, oh my gosh, I need to download Headspace again and I need to start meditating because, I mean, I'm like a hypochondriac. I literally, my main goal in life is to like find ways to not die. But um, yeah, I just thought that was really cool. And for me, that was a big like, fuck, it's not just about being calm. Cause like for me, I'm like, okay, it's fine if I don't meditate. I'll deal with my anxiety, I'll deal with it. But I find it hard to meditate. Um, and now I'm like, okay, but it's not just about dealing with my anxiety on a day-to-day -day basis. Like one, that anxiety is probably frying my brain, but also like I need to, I want to like have a healthy brain. I want it to like grow old gracefully and like I want to live to on a thousand. The sun has gone down. The stars haven't come out yet though and I've lost my pen. But okay, the next section is the brain. So Camille met with a neuroscientist. So he was more talking about wellness in terms of happiness. Um, and basically Unimony is the idea of things that like make us happy in the long run. And that's the things we are meant to prioritize. And that's things that we hold, that we hold value to or we give value to. Um, so that's like your passion, like your family, your, your friends. Um, things like that and that's what kind of makes things that make your soul happy um and that's the kind of wellness we should be like um aiming towards but nowadays we kind of focus on the four f's 
like immediate gratification for your body so things which make your body like have a boost of a happy hormone like instantly so there's four f's he described the first one is feeding fighting fleeing was the third one and he described the fourth one as reproductive behavior now i run with this one because i was like this is really interesting because a lot of like the social media world and like our kind of modern ideal person is kind of based around reproductive behavior because it's like whatever is like sexy sells whatever looks good sells um and obviously it's a capitalist society we live in so I mean, I just thought that was an interesting one. And I think a lot of people nowadays um, prioritize that over other things and they get lost with that and they fail to find their kind of own eudaimonian things and they let the four Fs get to them. There are teenagers screaming outside of my window. But, okay, the last thing that I wanted to take note of, which is actually a really interesting point he spoke on, like, it was kind of like, I've never really seen this spoken about, but his idea of placebos. Da -da -da, he had, like, a clear quote, it wasn't a cluster, but he had something like this on his desk, and Camille asked him, he's like, oh, so you, I see you have crystals, like, what do you think about crystals as a scientist? Um, and he said that if you believe that it works, and you truly believe that it works, then that's a placebo. If having this with me constantly gives me confidence, even though this actually like scientifically doesn't give me any confidence, then that's, there's nothing wrong with that. Because it's like nowadays it's hard to find things that don't have a side effect and things like that. I mean, I guess the side effect of placebos is like money. Um, but he said there's nothing wrong with placebos and placebos are given such a bad name and like, they, they shouldn't, they shouldn't be given a bad name because if it works then it works and if it works for you like it literally doesn't, doesn't concern anyone else crystals wellness represents being kind to yourself loving yourself in a balanced way they actually gave a definition for like a crystal novice what is crystals so they said and i'm reading this word for word every crystal is a conductor for a precise energy frequency and that precision is why crystals are used in things like phones and other kinds of tech because they conduct conduct a very specific precise frequency um so the kind of theory science whatever you want to call it i don't want to get political about crystals is that they harness a kind of energy they are made like deep within the earth um and through different minerals and elements and I, I'm totally, obviously, I have them. Um, I'm totally into them. I totally believe that they have energy and I feel a difference, whether it's just a placebo or not, that matter, that matter. Like you are drawn to things which you need. If you're hungry, you will be drawn to the kitchen and you want food. If you're thirsty, you'll be drawn to like a pool of water. If you are lacking a certain energy and you see that energy in front of you, you will be drawn to that. And that's like a big thing with crystals. Like you, they, everyone says that you should always go towards the crystals you are drawn to. Yeah, and I think that's just really, really cool. Um, and that was kind of a, a cool thing, which I, I didn't know a lot of people would typically or commonly associate with wellness, is that crystals and your energy. Um, but I guess it kind of makes sense because it's always about like the mind, body and spirit. Um, I guess I, I assumed this documentary would focus more on the mind and the body. Um, I wouldn't really, I didn't think they would focus on the spirit and like actually talk about crystals and stuff, which is really, really sick. Um, and then also they added in the community. So they ended it with basically asking each specialist what they thought wellness was. And I thought that was a really cool way to end it um, because it, it is slightly different for everyone and everyone has a different like outlook on it. But everyone did touch on the mind, body, spirit and community. Um, and I think the DJ from the Five Rhythms Dance, this is like kind of what she said. She said, wellness is when you are aware enough to be present, to know what you need. And then one of the guys actually, um, said that this in terms of like being well you are more connected to the divine and i thought that was really really cool because i feel like that like I, I am very very spiritual but i don't know where i fit um in terms of like assigning myself and like 
that kind of like surrendering to a specific god or religion like i i haven't done that yet because i don't really know where i fit um, and that's why i'm really really drawn to druids in in like the whole wicker sphere because it's more about the natural world is kind of like the ruler um from my understanding of it anyways i, I could be completely wrong um I've been interested in it for a couple years, but I'm not an expert whatsoever. Um, and I've kind of always felt like when I focus on like myself and the natural self and the holistic approach to understanding me, that's when I felt most spiritual, most connected and most guided. Um, so yeah, I, I just thought that was a really cool thing that they touched on. And it was such a good documentary. I didn't know Vogue did documentaries. Um, but I, yeah, no, I was really surprised by this. I really, really was. Um, I really, really enjoyed it. And it's something that I probably will rewatch, or I'll probably just rewatch this video to like get the like key points of it. Um, it. No, yeah, it literally has given me advice that I will, I have made changes in my life too, and I will continue to be aware of. Thank you so much for watching. Um, I'll leave the link to the documentary below. Today, Vogue have also split it up on their YouTube as like, each specialist that Camille went to, they've broken it up in, in clumps of that. Um, so you can kind of hone in on whatever bit that you like. <laughs> you gotta like talk to yourself nicer. Instead of saying to yourself, what's wrong with me? You have to be compassionate to yourself. Cause that's the first way that you can start changing is when you really love yourself enough to say, I don't want to do this to myself.